Hamas was able to pull off this attack and bypass Israeli and Western intelligence agencies. With us now to take a closer look at this, MSNBC military analyst, retired General Barry McCaffrey and retired Rear Admiral Mark Montgomery, Senior Director of the Center on Cyber and Technology Innovation at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Rear Admiral M Montgomery, you were in the region not too long ago looking at security that Israel has on the border with Gaza. What's that like? And we're just seeing another massive explosion right now in Gaza City. Well, I'm sorry, hey, Admiral. Yeah, thank Go you. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, uh, I, I, uh, I was down there. I was in one of the kibbutzes down by the border. And I have to tell you, um, it Ooh, looked, you know, to my, you know, to my unpracticed eye, that the. Uh, there was a significant level of Israeli security down there, you know, in terms of fencing, um, patrols by tanks, uh, camera systems, guns slayed to camera systems, and, uh, and a brigade of, uh, of uh, army infantry there. Um, I mean, obviously, that at some level, at some point, that became something that was accessible by uh, Hamas, and they were able to neutralize a significant amount. And in fact, while I was there, I think the, there was a higher level of concern about the tunneling that was happening up on the Lebanese border by Hezbollah than probably there was associated with the uh, with a chance of a breakout from the uh, fence line around Gaza. So uh, obviously there was a, a real strategic failure of intelligence here, and it was able to take advantage of some tactical weaknesses that Hamas had assessed over the last few years around the Gaza fence line. Yeah, just I mean, it's just it seems as though they they it was so planned and it was, you know, air, sea, and, and land. Uh, is it just uh, that they were caught off guard? I mean, it seems as though all that security that you mentioned was pretty easily foiled. Well, obviously they had a lot of resources here, and I mean, you know, Iran has provided a lot of resources over the years to Hezbollah and Hamas, and I mean, of quite a large number of rockets were fired, um, you know, in concert with this, and uh, a large amount of equipment. So, you know, when you have adequate resourcing, you have time, and you have an intent to do ill will, you know, there is a potential for being successful, and if, if Israel and the United States wasn't listening to the right circuits, uh, if Israel wasn't monitoring the right, uh, the right people, didn't have enough uh, agents inside to explain what was going on, then this kind of tactical surprise was probably inevitable. General uh, McCaffrey, you know, you and I spoke over the weekend, and, and as we're seeing now what is a sustained, uh, you know, bombing campaign in, in Gaza City. Uh, General, what is it that security and military experts have to take into consideration when you're talking about, you know, bombing an area where there are, you know, huge civilian population and where there may be, uh, you know, hostages that are uh, held in, in buildings or, or underneath those buildings? Well, clearly it's a uh, challenge to the IDF that has no easy answers. Um, they're calling up their reserves right now. There's 170,000 Israelis on active duty, but they've got uh, the better part of a half million reservists they can call up. So I think right now the, the one solution that the IDF will consider is a massive on-the-ground invasion of Gaza to control the surface, sit there for a month, to 90 days and then have their intelligence agencies and special ops try and find these hostages. It's a dim prospect, but I cannot imagine Israel as a family. You know, when I, uh, when I visit the IDF, they take me around and underscore any loss is felt painfully by the entire nation, small nation. So they're not gonna allow a hundred hostages to go unanswered. I might also add, to add to the, the uh, the admiral's point, uh, the scale of deception and surprise that the Hamas achieved at a strategic level, uh, as well as tactical, is simply astonishing. The IDF really let their guard down. Why there weren't counterattack forces readily manned, probably a result of a holiday spirit in Israel. So that's something to take into account, uh, not just for Israel, but the United States as well. 
And, and General McCaffrey, I mean, there, there are talks in, in the fact that there wasn't an immediate response or, you know, at the moment, special forces uh, on, on call. Uh, could it have something to do with the, you know, expanding the West Bank settlements and, and the, the, the forces that have been sent to protect those, those settlers there? Uh, could it be that, that, you know, the government simply didn't listen to possible allied countries giving them advance warning about something about to happen in Gaza? In other words, is it that it just happened in a vacuum? Well, I, I'm going to assume that the Iranians put a planning cell together, did, did a lot of the development of this operation, uh, had a deception plan of considerable sophistication, probably trained many of these forces not in Gaza would they be observed, the paragliders, but back in Iran, uh, and studied the vulnerabilities of the Israeli intelligence system. You know, obviously they had cameras, so forces, the thousand fighters across the frontier weren't rehearsing this in public uh, over the last several months. So it was a very well done operation by Hamas. They're going to lose most of the people they put across the border. And by the way, the IDF has still not regained total control of the local situation. There's still fighters uh, inside uh, Israel. So, you know, it, it was a well done operation. It caught the Israelis off guard. They're now facing a, uh, a situation in which there is no good answer to. Jose, we've talked about this before. This is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. But the Israelis have no choice, uh, in my view. They're going to have to go into uh, Gaza while worrying about the principal responsibility of the United States at this time is prevent escalation of the war, both by diplomatic means and by a show of force uh, moving substantial U.S. Navy and Air Force assets into the region. Rear Admiral Mark Montgomery and uh, General Barry McCaffrey, thank you both so much for being with us this morning. Meantime, volunteer groups in Israel have stepped up to deal with the massive human toll on the ground. One of the organizations.